evolution used to be a simple tale of humans evolving in Africa and then spreading out of Africa to the far corners of the globe, but recent archaeological discoveries are calling this narrative into question. In point of fact, we have been told that Homo erectus was the first human to leave Africa, but an article published in the prestigious journal Nature writes that, stone fragments found in Georgia suggest Homo erectus might have evolved outside Africa. Homo erectus was the largest, smartest, and fastest hominid yet seen on Earth. Homo erectus, the extinct ancient human, is a species of firsts. It was the first of our ancestors to have human-like body proportions, with shorter arms and longer legs in comparison to its torso. It was also thought to be the first known hominin to leave Africa and the first to cook food. Small bands of prehistoric people roamed a sandy, steep grassland for hundreds of thousands of years. They subsisted on the animals around them, possibly hunting or scavenging for their carcasses, and their tools were crude, razor-sharp blades fashioned from chipped stone. They were terrified of the big cats and other dangerous predators which stalked their offspring. They were also isolated. Beyond the 25 or 50 in their group with whom they shared a home, they were unlikely to encounter other creatures who resembled them. This was our forefathers' strange existence on the savannah. The image of hunter-gatherers traversing meadows is classic, but according to a new study, this scene did not take place only in Africa, but also in Eurasia. We hear a lot about out of Africa, yet early hominids had no idea they were leaving Africa. They were simply following their prey. Given that the oldest fossils and artifacts in Eurasia have similar dates to those in Africa, they may even have migrated into Africa from Eurasia, rather than the other way around. Some anthropologists have speculated that Homo erectus evolved outside of Africa because the species' oldest known fossils, prior to a recent discovery, were discovered at the Dmanisai site in Georgia. The date of a two-million-year-old Homo erectus skull from South Africa was supposed to be the final nail in the Out of Eurasia coffin, but some are still skeptical. Supporters of the Out of Africa hypothesis argue that an Asian origin for Homo erectus is extremely doubtful. The first issue with that theory is that the earliest evidence for Homo erectus is now from South Africa. The larger issue, though, is that there is no potential ancestor for Homo erectus in Asia. Or is there? The discovery of the ancient brain case in South Africa does not imply that Homo erectus evolved there. Out of Africa advocates believe it emerged somewhere in Africa where we haven't searched yet, based on present evidence. There are no hominin fossils found at sites where the oldest Homo erectus artifacts have been discovered. Nonetheless, our ancestors moved to Eurasia sooner than previously supposed. Homo erectus may have evolved outside of Africa from a transitional group of Homo habilis, according to stone tools and fossils discovered in the Republic of Georgia. Indeed, a new discovery has muddied the waters about the origins of Homo erectus. Archaeologists have long assumed that Homo erectus, humanity's earliest ancestor to travel throughout the Old World, originated in Africa before spreading over Europe and Asia. However, evidence of toolmaking near the European-Asian border calls that theory into question. Archaeologists excavated the Dmanisai site in Georgia's Caucasus Mountains. They discovered stone artifacts in strata that were nearly 1.85 million years old, largely flakes that were dropped as hominins napped rocks to construct tools for slaughtering animals. Furthermore, the distribution of the 122 artifacts at Dmanisai offers a picture of the area's long-term occupancy. Instead of being concentrated in a single layer of sediment, which would imply that hominins visited the site short on one occasion, the artifacts are dispersed throughout multiple layers of sediment, dating from 1.85 million to 1.77 million years ago. The findings, which were peer-reviewed, were published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. This find is consistent with a long-term regional population, that has effectively acclimated to the temperate environments of the southern Caucasus. If this discovery had been made in Africa, it would have been heralded as one of the greatest archaeological finds ever, but since it is at odds with the out-of-Africa hypothesis, the motives and credentials of the archaeologists are questioned. Indeed. The fossils show that these early humans had startlingly primitive bodies about five feet tall, simple tools, and brains one-third to one-half the size of modern humans. 
several paleontologists feel they provide a better picture of Homo erectus early, primordial forms than fragmentary African specimens. How did these early hominins travel from sub-Saharan Africa to the Caucasus Mountains? What enabled them to leave Africa without the use of fire, sophisticated tools or massive brains? How did they manage to survive? Interesting, I thought human evolution only took place in the Garden of Eden in Africa and that humans only left after they evolved big brains. Are you telling me that there is not universal consensus on all aspects of human evolution? Truth be told, archaeologists would all love to uncover a hominid with a stone tool in its cold dead hand, to have indisputable proof who made it. The presence of piles of cobblestones near the entrance of an old gully suggests that hominins tried to fend off, or hunt, predators by stoning them. Even with their primitive stone tools, these humans were not pacifists, since they competed for meat with huge carnivores. Whilst the fossil's small size and brains suggest Homo habilis, their relatively lengthy legs and contemporary body proportions suggest Homo erectus. Large brow ridges and large faces are morphological qualities that all of the skulls share, however the degree to which they are evident varies. The Dmanisci hominins had an encephalization quotient, or brain-to-body mass ratio, ranging from 2.4 to 3.1. This is towards the lower end of Homo erectus estimations and more in line with Homo habilis and Australopithecines. In Skull 4, however, there is indirect evidence of social collaboration from a man who had lost all but one tooth by the time of his death. Without fire to cook food, a toothless individual would have struggled to survive for years in a frigid environment. Though it is plausible that he may have survived on his own by digesting soft animal organs such as brains and marrow using pounding tools, a more persuasive assumption is that he was cared for by other members of his species. As they departed Africa, these hominids charted their own destiny. Scholars had long assumed that Homo erectus migrated out of Africa in the wake of African creatures that they hunted and scavenged. Yet, all of the approximately 17,000 animal bones examined thus far at Dmanisai are from Eurasian species, not African ones. The only mammals not of Eurasian origin are hominins, providing compelling evidence that hominins behave differently than other animals. Possibly exploring new terrain enabled hominins to hunt animals that would not have understood to fear and escape meat-eating humans. The discovery of a tool-using human population on the outskirts of Europe so early suggests that the northern continent, rather than Africa, may have been Homo erectus evolutionary origin. Unfortunately, the lack of fossils of the hominins responsible for oldest toolmaking at this date isn't helping the debate. Because the fossilized bone fragments discovered in the same sedimentary levels as the Dmanisci artifacts are too weathered to be identified as belonging to any one species, it is impossible to say for certain whether the tools were created by Homo erectus. According to one scenario, this population of early Homo erectus or advanced Homo habilis evolved into Eurasian Homo erectus, and eventually returned to Africa as fully grown Homo erectus. Neither do fossil skulls recovered from later strata at the site help to settle the debate. These 1.77 million-year-old fossils had brains ranging in size from 600 to 770, 5 cubic centimeters, whereas Homo erectus is considered to have had an average brain size of roughly 900 cubic centimeters. Homo habilis, on the other hand, had a brain size ranging from 600 to 900 cubic centimeters, and some anthropologists believe these specimens are Homo habilis rather than Homo erectus. Perhaps the objection to labeling them Homo habilis stems from the belief that only the more sophisticated and larger brained Homo erectus was capable of leaving Africa. In comparison, modern humans have a brain volume of approximately 1,350 cubic centimeters. Many people consider the Dmanisci fossils to be the earliest Homo erectus, however, this is still up for debate. In fact, they could have been a Homo habilis transitional group that evolved into Homo erectus and then into Homo antecessor, Neanderthals, Denisovans, and finally Homo sapiens. Homo erectus coexisted in East Africa alongside numerous other early human species, including Homo rudolfensis, Homo habilis, and Paranthropus boisei, during the beginning of its temporal span, circa 2 million years. 
they were sometimes discovered at the same fossil locations. It coexisted with Homo sapiens and Homo floresiensis in Indonesia at the end of its temporal span, roughly 100,000 years ago. If these Georgian specimens are Homo habilis, it would explain the presence of Homo floresiensis in Indonesia, which most anthropologists feel is more closely linked to Homo habilis than Homo erectus. Even if the ancient Manasai humans were not early members of Homo erectus, there is still a problem. Anthropologists previously believed that no hominids existed outside of Africa as early as 1.85 million years ago. Recent stone tools in China date back more than 2 million years, but they are of a more rudimentary sort than Homo erectus utilized. The age of the tools, together with the possibility that hominins arrived in China before 2.12 million years ago, suggests that the toolmaker was a species such as Homo habilis. There's even a chance the toolmaker was an Australopithecus, a group of more ape-like hominins that includes the renowned Lucy specimen. All Australopithecus fossils identified so far have come from Africa, yet Homo floresiensis is a near relative. Central China is 14,000 kilometers, or 8,700 miles from the nearest sites in East Africa where additional hominins of similar age have been unearthed, implying that hominins traveled great distances before 2 million years ago. It's plausible that the toolmakers, who were hunter-gatherers, were just following their prey. Until recently, anthropology textbooks frequently displayed maps with big arrows, depicting the movement of early Homo erectus from its presumed core location of eastern Africa to other parts of the Old World. The findings in Manasai cast doubt on such an explanation. Some archaeologists believe that Homo erectus ancestors may have traveled to Asia and maybe Europe, evolved, and then returned to Africa. Remember, the hominins would not have realized they were leaving Africa. There were no signs that said, you are leaving Africa now, come back and see us. What's more, it is unknown why hominins would have undertaken such reverse migrations. It's puzzling and makes little sense. Indeed. Archaic hominins may have followed their food source and the migrations are linked to the advent of carnivory, and the unexpected ability to survive and consume flesh. Furthermore, because there was no competition from other hominins, they might have spread very quickly, like any invasive species. Homo erectus was an apex predator. Sites often demonstrate ingestion of medium to big animals, such as bovines or elephants, implying the evolution of predatory behavior and coordinated hunting. Vegetarians, on the other hand, are restricted to the plants that support them and cannot migrate as easily from the tropics to deserts to mountains as predators can. As a result, hominins were hunting prey to while they migrated. Dispersal of species occurs for a variety of reasons, but Homo erectus most likely migrated across northern Africa, across the Sinai Peninsula, and into Asia when environmental changes meant acceptable habitats and food sources extended that far. In Georgia, for example, saber-toothed cat remains were discovered with Homo erectus fossils. The cat seemed to have dispersed from Africa. Because these specialized carnivores lacked the teeth to strip a carcass clean of its meat, humans may have provided possibilities for scavenging for early humans who followed them out of Africa. The tall body and huge brains of Homo erectus individuals required a lot of energy to function on a daily basis. Eating meat and other types of protein, that could be swiftly digested allowed nutrients to be absorbed with a shorter digestive tract, allowing more energy to be available faster. It's also possible that honey and subterranean tubers were important dietary sources for Homo erectus. Early Homo erectus and Homo habilis were able to hunt prey by throwing round rocks with impressive skill. Long before the invention of the spear, our prehistoric ancestors were throwing rocks to take down prey on the African plains. Small chunks of rock, many the size of a tennis ball, still litter the ground at important archaeological sites. When comparing the physiology of Homo erectus to modern humans, our ancient ancestor had a body almost identical to a modern human and could throw just as well as we throw today. Homo erectus was the first creature in the world that could throw really hard and really fast at the same time, and do it pretty accurately. Humans are the only animals who have the ability to accurately throw an object at extremely high velocities. This skill has been essential to our survival and success as a species. 
early humans evolved this skill for hunting and defense, specifically for hurling rocks at animals to kill our food and to protect from predators. Indeed, humans are uniquely specialized for throwing, both anatomically and psychologically. Throwing has played a vital role in our evolutionary past, enabling us both to hunt prey, and to compete with other carnivores to scavenge carcasses. The ability to damage or kill prey at a distance not only expands the range of foods available, but also reduces the risk of close confrontation with dangerous prey. This all points to rocks being used in social hunting, working together to bring down prey or scare off carnivores from a kill. This isn't exactly news about humans, but being social is a good predictor of large brains and intelligence. And while some of these characteristics appear in early Australopithecus, all elements appear together in Homo erectus, an ancestor that appeared about two million years ago. By developing our throwing power, we were able to take down larger animals with rocks and spears, a real game-changer. Soon after we see evidence of the earliest Homo erectus fossils in the fossil record, we see evidence of the first major advance in stone tool technology in the archaeological record. The Acheulean stone tool industry was responsible for the development of huge cutting implements, such as hand axes and cleavers. A greater dependence on a larger collection of tools may have aided Homo erectus survival amid climatic change. The oldest evidence of campfires is also found during the Homo erectus time period. While there is evidence that hearths were used for cooking and probably sharing food, they were also likely to be sites for social interaction as well as for warmth and to keep huge predators at bay. However, when compared to other hominins, such as Neanderthals, this species may have been relatively lazy in terms of toolmaking. Thousands of objects from an excavation site were examined by archaeologists. Their findings revealed that Homo erectus made the least amount of effort required to build tools and acquire supplies. The study discovered that these early humans lived in areas with easy access to stones and water. They would manufacture their stone tools out of whatever rocks they could find lying around their camp, which were typically of lower quality than what later stone tool makers utilized. A rocky outcrop a short distance from the Homo erectus sites offered higher quality rock but required a climb up a hill. But instead of walking up the slope, they would just use whatever rocks had rolled down and were lying at the bottom. In contrast, Neanderthals and early Homo sapiens climbed mountains and transported high-quality stones over great distances. Anthropologists previously believed that Homo erectus evolved fewer than two million years ago. The oldest Homo erectus specimen is a child's skull from South Africa, often known as the cradle of humankind, dating back roughly two million years. This categorization as Homo erectus, however, is not without criticism. Indeed, it's a wonderful study that looks very convincing, although more of the skull would have been perfect. They make a compelling case that it is a hominid with closest connections to Homo erectus, which makes it the most Homo erectus-like thing ever uncovered in South Africa. However, Rick Potts, the Smithsonian's Human Origins Program's lead paleoanthropologist stated, I have no doubt that they have something that is of the genus Homo, but the fragmentary skull lacks all of the telltale traits that would classify it as Homo erectus. Furthermore, the cranium belongs to a two- or three-year-old child, with which there are few comparison. Potts says that he is not certain that the skull is a Homo erectus. That would be one of the most intriguing aspects of the investigation, since if they do have Homo erectus, it would be the world's oldest known specimen. If they are correct in their identification of Homo erectus, the discovery's early dates raise an intriguing question. How did the species reach South Africa? One theory is that Homo erectus began here and subsequently spread to East Africa and eventually out of Africa. The discovery of the oldest known bones, however, does not necessarily imply that Homo erectus evolved in this location. In reality, the origins of Homo erectus are still an enigma. The age of the species was especially startling in the case of the child Homo erectus cranium. Most paleoanthropologists believe that this human progenitor evolved in East Africa, where multiple younger Homo erectus fossils have been discovered, as well as the likely remains of older Homo species. Furthermore, previous research into the Earth's magnetic field revealed that a magnetic reversal happened 1.95 million years ago. 
perhaps it is not a coincidence that this is also the time when Homo erectus appeared. According to one theory, Australopithecus sediba was a direct ancestor of Homo erectus and Homo habilis. In fact, a pole reversal 790,000 years ago is linked to the split of Homo erectus and Homo sapiens, as well as Neanderthals and Denisovans. Due to high levels of UV exposure, a partial reversal 41,000 years ago may have caused the extinction of the Neanderthals. Researchers should now be hunting for a group that lived around 700,000 to 900,000 years ago, to discover the last common ancestor of modern humans, dubbed Adam and Eve. The strongest candidate for the common ancestor, Homo antecessor, is known from 900,000-year-old remains from Spain, and such specimens may be found in Africa, Europe, or the Middle East. According to academics, the ancestors of Neanderthals and Denisovans migrated out of Africa some 700,000 years ago, albeit it is unclear why they assume the ancestor came from Africa. Nonetheless, such timing would have allowed Neanderthals or their direct relatives to evolve in what is now northern Spain around 430,000 years ago. Previous studies claimed that Neanderthals appeared around 300,000 years ago, raising concerns regarding the evolutionary identity of older proto-Neanderthal fossils discovered in Spain. Scientists believe that the genetically isolated population survived for only about 15,000 years, before their numbers plummeted when they departed Africa around 700,000 years ago. Survivors interbred with members of the Homo erectus population that had long inhabited Eurasia, before essentially replacing them and splitting into two populations, Denisovans and Neanderthals. Scientists estimate that Denisovans and Neanderthals received at least 2% of their DNA, from the ancient Eurasian Homo erectus group. Homo erectus lived for approximately 2 million years, making it the most successful human species ever discovered. Homo sapiens may be more numerous than Homo erectus has ever been. But how long will we last? The only way to know is to wait and see. But for now we can still crown Homo erectus as the most successful human ever.